welcome everyone to our webinar um, entitled How Foothills and Meadows Use Technology to Save Costs and Deliver Exceptional Play Experiences. My name is Bordo Siva. I'm the CEO of Tag Marshall, and I've got a, a very exciting uh, expert guest uh, with me today, uh, Tom Woodard uh, from uh, Foothills and Meadows, uh, the famous Denver, I Denver icon from Colorado. Tom, welcome to our webinar and thanks for making the time. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, let us jump straight on it. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your very, very busy golf courses that you look after? Well, uh, I manage uh, two golf courses in the southwest quadrant of the Denver metro area, uh, two facilities with four golf courses. I was born in Midland, Texas, uh, grew up in uh, uh, the Denver metro area, uh, attended the University of Colorado on an Evans scholarship, which is actually a full caddy scholarship. Uh, played on the golf team for four years after I graduated. I played professional golf for eight years and during those eight years, I got my PGA Tour card twice during the qualifying school in 81 and 1984. I played in two U.S. Opens, one PGA Championship. I played the Asian Tour, and uh, I'm in the Colorado Golf Hall of Fame and the University of Colorado Athletic Hall of Fame. But my claim to fame is that I've been a club professional at high-volume golf courses now for going on my 35th year. So that's where I'm at now. Hugely experienced, and obviously uh, this is a very timely webinar, seeing the US Open was just around the corner. Uh, fantastic that you had an opportunity to play. What, do, what were your thoughts on this year's um, outing at Wingfoot and, uh, and Bryson DeChambeau taken at home? Did, did you watch and what did you think? Well, uh, the, the one word that comes to my mind is distance. And the one thing I noticed is that it's certainly easier to hit a wedge or a nine iron out of the rough as it is to hit a four or five iron. I played my first US Open at Brookline outside the city of Boston. And uh, even having played the PGA Tour, US Open is an interesting experience. And when I hit the ball in the rough, I was using wedge and sand wedges to chip it back to the fairway as opposed to going to the green. So. I think that what uh, Bryson is doing uh, with the increased distance, I think there will be a lot of tour pros in the future copying that uh, plan to, to hit it deep, deeper. Yep, yeah, and he's still going for more, right? Um, yes. But uh, when it comes to distance and doing more, that's also what you guys do at, uh, at Fultons and Meadows because um, you do a lot of golf, right? Tell us about your facilities and also tell us a bit about this year and what has brought you with all well, its challenges and, and, we and joys. We are two high volume golf courses. Uh, on a normal, during a normal year, we'll, we'll play 110,000 rounds approximately at our Foothills complex. Now remember, uh, that is 36 holes. It's a unique combination of an 18-hole regulation golf course, a nine-hole par three golf course, and a nine-hole executive golf course. And that combination doesn't exist anywhere else in the state of Colorado. We're affordable golf at Foothills. It's a parkland golf course, short distances from tee to greens. And so we're extremely busy. And, and during this pandemic, we're actually – 30% uh, up in rounds played. So we're on a pace to do approximately 140,000 rounds this year on a 36 foot facility. Foothills Golf Course, I would classify it as an upscale public golf course. We normally play about 38,000 rounds there. We're on pace to play just under 50,000 rounds this year. Again, uh, it's the neat thing about golf courses, they've been proven to be pandemic proof, uh, easy to social distance and, and golfers certainly have taken advantage of that. Um, incredible, it's just an incredible amount of golf. And obviously we, um, we're working with a lot of clubs and many of them have said, yeah, we're up 20%, but you guys have taken that and, and matched and raised it. Um, so who is coming to play? Like, what's different? Are you seeing, um, 
yeah, more younger players? Are you seeing players that have just dusted off their, their set of clubs, or is it new players that are joining? What what are you seeing at, at, at well, the Well, at, at our Foothills golf course, with the executive golf course and the par three golf course, we're seeing a lot of new golfers. We're seeing a lot of millennials. Uh, we're, we're seeing uh, a, a, actually a decrease in senior play, as you know, mm -hmm. During this pandemic, they are in a high risk category, so the senior play is a little down. However, the millennials, whether they're working from home and, and able to get out a little bit more, I think a lot of folks have uh, golfers have more disposable income because in the state of Colorado, uh, we're playing sports, professional teams are playing sports, but no fans. So, baseball, sure. no fans to so baseball games or football games. So, mm -hmm. folks are having a little bit more disposable income and I mean, they're spending it on the sports that's perfect during a pandemic. They're coming out and playing golf. So well done. But uh, that obviously also brings some challenges with, with regards to management because you're busier than ever. And that's what we want to talk about today. Tom, thank you for the uh, very generous uh, introduction. Fantastic. Um, I was joking with you earlier that we've got the same hairdresser. We're very tall guys. And one of us knows how to play golf really well. <laughs> um, let me do a quick introduction, if you don't mind, uh, for uh, the, the people that don't know us. So, so Tag Marsh is a, a golf course optimization platform. We are now... Um, in our sixth year of operation, we have tracked more than 12 million rounds of golf and uh, data is very important to us. As you will see with our, our presentation that we're doing with Tom today, we've got over a billion data points that we collected and that we're learning from. And, and at this point, we are cracking the, the 300 clubs that we work with. We mentioned the US Open, so Wingfoot uh, is one of our um, is one of our, our customers, um, as is Pinehurst. Pinehurst have just been signed up uh, by the USGA, who also happened to move into Pinehurst. Matt Boxer told me that yesterday uh, for another four US Opens over the next uh, 20 years or so. Uh, so they're certainly going to remain a feature. And we've got um, yeah, a lot of private clubs, including Eastlake, for instance, that we just watched on the big screen a few weeks ago, Valhalla, um, where Tiger Woods famously won. Um, I believe the Valhalla team has signed up to today's webinar. Welcome, guys. Um, but also a lot of uh, yeah, high-end um, daily fee courses like Aaron Hills, for instance, or Whistling Straits. Where sadly, we're not going to see the Ryder Cup this year, but next year. Uh, postponed is better than cancelled. Um, but the majority of our clubs that we work with are really middle-of-the-road clubs, um, not half as busy as Foothills and Meadows. And, and this is really sort of your your middle of the road club that does 25, 30,000 rounds a year and, and wants to work more effectively and, and provide a better play experience wherever possible. So that's where we're finding ourselves. Um, and it's been a tremendously rewarding journey because we get to work with uh, people such as Tom who um, always give us uh, good feedback as to how we can continue improving and also good feedback as to what they can do with our system at, at their courses. So what we want to talk about today, Tom, is uh, for very simple key questions. We, first, we want to look at what are the key factors that influence the golfer experience. And I couldn't ask anyone um, better than you because you have been a golfer all your life. And so you, you love to play, but also you've been a manager for three decades, which is phenomenal. Then a question that I'd like to ask is how to, do you use technology to increase efficiencies? Um, at your at your clubs and how is it saving you money how do you use tech to enhance the player experience and then lastly is it good for your business um, so that's the outline um, and let's jump into the first section and what i need to do now is figure out how a poll works because what i always like to do is um, ask our audience uh, where they sit so the poll includes um, let me just launch it. Um, Tom, I'm not sure if you can see it because yes. you are a panelist. So we don't want to, to jig um, our, our poll results, but uh, basically here's a, a few um, items that we know are key experience factors. And what I would like to see is what our audience thinks are the top three or for them, you know, as players and as managers, what, what are the top three, uh, what comes out tops? So let's just give that a minute before we look at and ask Tom what, what you believe are the, the top three and your vast experience and what uh, rises to the top here. So I can see live results, Tom, I don't know if you can, <laughs> uh, uh, because our, 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 audience actually, our audience actually can't see it, 
because otherwise they would be influenced, which, uh, which we don't want. Uh, we know that uh, polling and voting is a very hot topic, <laughs> especially this year, especially in uh, your beautiful country. Um, okay, so let's just see that, see that come through here. Um, okay, we've got, I think we've done one minute. So let's end our poll um, and let me see if I can share the results. Okay, so the results, uh, Tom, can you see those, those yes, results? Yes, I can see the results now. What is your sense of this? How would you have voted? What are the top three in terms of the player experience factors? Well, during my 30-plus uh, career, I've done uh, several surveys related to this, and always the top three or four are location, of course, uh, course conditions, which is 100% here, uh, pace of play and uh, uh, affordability. And, uh, and, and I, again, I can see that course conditions is a hundred percent here. Uh, pace of play is it's always critical. And uh, location is kind of interesting that uh, uh, I didn't see that as one of the choices, but generally golfers will location is always in the top two or three. So this yeah, I suppose that, that is uh, included in the accessibility, you know, can okay. I get to the course, um, yeah. but you, you're right that that could have been asked differently and cost and value is one of the points that you mentioned that comes out uh, top three here. Yes. Um, so location, uh, that is something where the Denver metro area is uh, very kind as far as traffic is concerned generally. So I would think that that is part of your recipe for success. Would you agree? Yeah, uh, we kind of, we, we use these as our benchmark. Uh, I'm always 100% uh, adamant that if we're looking at budget cuts, uh, we're not going to do it at golf course conditions. Uh, one of our golf courses, we have a clubhouse that's a little bit older, but uh, with the limited capital resources that we have, we don't hesitate to spend money to make sure that our conditions are uh, 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 at the top. And as you can imagine, a high volume golf course, uh, that, that adds up to a lot of car traffic, a lot of divots, a lot of ball marks. So we spend quite a bit, bit of money on in golf course conditions. And obviously with a high volume golf course, pace of play is critical. That's, uh, that's very important to us. And then uh, obviously uh, uh, being a high volume uh, golf course, we're affordable. Uh, Price is all, always a factor in, in uh, high volume golf courses. Uh, it's affordable golf. Um, let me let me jump ahead. So I think we've we've tackled this uh, the set of questions really well. So so what is good to see is that obviously we've got experts on this webinar, not not only in yourself but also most of the people who are joining us are managers, and obviously you. Uh, spot on in saying that the top factor is course conditioning and you just confirming that um, also in terms of your investment but what is so critical and often that is not um, valued enough is that pace and flow of play is so close to it you know I mean you, you took 82% in this USGA survey that quiz about 25,000 people 82% of players said conditioning is key for us and then 74% which is a 6% of that said pace and flow and time it takes to play is critical for our enjoyment. So in line with what you're saying, Tom, a lot of budget goes into course conditioning and it's never enough, right? You always want to do as much as you can rather than as little as possible. Whereas um, when it comes to the pace and the flow of play, that has traditionally been a sort of a bit of, of a grudge line item in your budget. Oh, we got to do something, right? But uh, it actually, um, and, and I, I would hope that you can confirm that, for a bit of an investment in this, it can be a game changer as to the results that you're achieving. And it's, um, in terms of your overall budget, it's a drop um, in the bucket, you know, but, but you made it such a difference to the players who are asking you to do it well. So are you surprised that 74% of players are saying flow and, and pace and time it takes to play is so critical? Probably not, right? No, 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 not at all. Uh, the, the analogy I will use is uh, if your golf course has geese problem, uh, then uh, it's something that you have to constantly pay attention to. You have to be adamant that you're going to constantly try to get rid of. And we've taken that same attitude towards pace of play. 
uh, this is our first year using the tag marshal system, but prior to this year, uh, we've used pace of play clocks. Uh, we have our golf course rated. We use uh, advertising and, and promoting the fact that uh, you even go to our restrooms on the bulletin boards. You know, you're expected to play in four hours and 20 minutes. Before they tee off, the, the starter will uh, tell the golfers, we have a pace of play policy. And, and then we add a tag marshal this year, and it, it, it's just been phenomenal as it relates to pace of play. It's helped tremendously. We're, we're very happy with uh, the product. There's no question. Fantastic. Um, Tom, we're going to look at some detail and also what your course looks like um, through the, the eyes of the system. But one of the things I, I just wanted to show quickly is um, another set of research um, that, that, that shows that as a golf course operator, there are a few things that you need to do well. And if you do those well, you will have very, very happy guests and members, right? Um, and some of the key factors, and this data comes from a company called Players First that many of you might be familiar with. They, uh, they do lots of post-round survey, surveys and literally have millions and millions of surveys that go out every season. And what they're finding is that the, the key factors are players want to feel welcome. Players want to find a good flow of play on the course. And they want to meet on-course staff. So if there's on-course staff and there's a positive interaction on the course, that, um, that does two things. It increases the restaurant visit percentage, which obviously is great uh, because that drives revenue for you. But more importantly, it increases and really skyrockets what is called the net promoter score. And Tom, um, you would have seen the net promoter score many, many times in your life as a consumer. It's basically the answer to the question, um, would you recommend this product or service to your friends and colleagues rated out of 10? Um, and a high net promoter score is anyone rating seven to 10. So you need to really make somebody happy for them to rate you seven or to 10. And if you make them unhappy, they would rate you zero to three or four. And if you're just delivering as expected or regular, then they would not rate you at all because that is somewhere between the four and, and the six range and it's not worth their time. So you have to really tick those boxes, make them feel welcome and that your staff is critical to that. Make sure that there's good flow and you need to manage it well. And that the management of the flow and meeting on course staff almost goes hand in hand. And, uh, and this is something that if you don't do it well, it starts to negatively affect your, your net promoter score. And then people don't come back as freely and they don't recommend you. Um, I know that, uh, I mean, with your um, course volume of play growing so tremendously, you've got to be doing something right, okay? It's, it's not just a case of um, everybody's now got time and more disposable income and, and they work from home. There's lots of golf clubs to choose from in Denver. And sure, they're all busier than usual, but it seems like you've got a, a bit of a special recipe going. And would you confirm that, uh, that you are ticking those boxes at, uh, at Foothills and Meadows? Absolutely. Um, we talked about the survey earlier. And so we are uh, uh, very conscious of why golfers play the golf courses they do. And as I shared with you, you know, location, obviously, affordability, golf course conditions and pace of play. And I mean, so as, a as an instructor or coach in golf, we're always teaching the fundamentals. And so as far as golf course management is concerned, especially at high volume public golf courses, uh, those are the four fundamentals that uh, we follow. You know, when I attend uh, uh, PGA spring and fall meetings for the Colorado section, uh, one of the things that we talk about and, and we're all uh, uh, kind of pressed to generate revenue. And, and there's a lot of golf courses out there uh, uh, there's probably too much inventory in most markets. Uh, but the one thing that the, the bottom line for us is this. I've been at this facility uh, for these facilities for 14 years and we, we, we've averaged a net of about a million dollars a year. And it's kind of hard to believe some pros in other parts of the country. It's, wait, wait a minute, you have four golf courses and, and you're netting approximately a million a year. Well, this year it's going to be $1.9 million that we're netting through uh, year to date at the end of September. And th those are incredible numbers. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm always having to 
uh, you know, prove that we are netting those numbers. So if anybody wants to see a copy of our year-to-date budget compared to last year, I'm welcome to, to email you. Uh, just send me uh, your email address. And as it relates to golf carts and pace of play, at one golf course, the 36-hole facility, we average uh, gross about $575,000 in cart revenue. The, the other golf course, uh, we're doing approximately $325,000 in, in golf cart revenue. And I know we'll talk about return on investment later as it relates to Tag Marshall, but uh, um, very happy and very unique. And I understand that we are outlier in the, in the golf industry for public golf courses. Um, sure. And, and I think it's important, uh, Tom, um, as much as we're all uh, gobsmacked by the volume that you're driving, um, that we have a lot of clubs that we work with that are doing very low volume runs. Like some are so exclusive, they do maybe 10,000 a year. And they're saying, well, we want to ensure that all of these are excellent. You know, that is why we're an exclusive club. <laughs> or um, we are a club that charges a royal sum of $250, $400, $500 like Pebble Beach would. We want to make sure that that sticks and that people love coming here and they will come back and they intend to return as, um, is as high as we can possibly do it. So that is where uh, you find uh, the usage of, of a system such as ours really across the board. Um, um, and, and ultimately what it comes down to is work effectively, make sure that your team is empowered and uh, uh, provide the best possible play experience. So as far as foothills and meadows is concerned, let's just take a look at what this looks like for you. And uh, just to be, um, maybe take a step back. So, so Tag Marshall as a optimization platform, we use a GPS um, uh, IoT devices. So that's internet of things, uh, which is the, the, the fancy word. Um, they speak to uh, satellites, they speak to our system, they send information back and forth. Um, and um, we have passive devices that are hidden away in, in golf carts or get, get uh, carried by walking golfers. And then we do have two way devices that have got a screen that is golfer facing. And that is a, uh, the system that, that Tom and, and his team at Foothills and Meadows have opted to go with. Um, and this screen grab, you must tell me which course is which, uh, Tom, I don't know. <laughs> You're looking at the Meadows Golf Course. This is an 18-hole regulation golf course. That's the, this one that so nicely fits on the screen. The other one is Meadows. Um, so this is the play as we found it about an hour ago. It's already busy. And what Tom, what can you see, just having a, a brief look at this, which I know that you do all day and as is your team, what can you see is happening out on the golf course? Just having well, a quick look it, at the screen. It looks like uh, the pace of play is spread out. Uh, and uh, the other thing that I kind of noticed right away uh, is uh, we've got carts and it's only 1025, but we're already, uh, carts are deep into the back nine. Uh, with guidelines, uh, the COVID guidelines, the, the jurisdiction that we're under mandates that uh, you have to have individual carts. So in other words, most of our groups, I, and I see this, it's evident today that there are four carts in, in one group. The only way you can ride uh, is if you're in the same household, ride together if you're in the same household. And if you're not in the same household and, and you choose to ride together, both must wear face masks. So obviously when the, the golfers come to the golf course, we explain that to them and 95% and choose to take their own individual golf cart. So certainly looks like the pace of play is, is going normal. It's a normal day out here right now. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, so uh, in terms of your team, and how do you manage uh, with the system? So you've got this oversight now, you know, where everybody is and also the system tells you if a group's falling out of position. Um, let me maybe just jump ahead to show what the front end looks like because um, I have seen that you use that two-way communication quite a bit uh, to get people uh, back to the clubhouse when, when it gets, starts to get dark for instance but also to remind them to please be mindful of their pace. Um, so how is it helping you from a, a management point of view um, and how did you use to run things before you had the system in terms of staffing? And, and have you found this uh, works for you as far as efficiency is concerned? Well, absolutely. Uh, we call them course assistants. Some 
courses call them rangers or marshals. We call them course assistants. And for example, at the Meadows Golf Course, we've all but eliminated our uh, golf course assistants. We use iPads. Uh, the Pro Shop has an iPad on their point of sale system and the starter has an iPad with the map diagram on there. Uh, one of the things that happens at a high volume golf course, you asked me earlier, what kind of uh, 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 demographics are, have increased the, the, the number of rounds. And what we've discovered is that we have a ton of late play. In other words, golfers that show up with an hour and a half, an hour, even a, hour, a half an hour of sunlight left and we call that our, our twilight rate. Mm. And so, but with that, uh, we have trouble getting our carts in. So all we have to do is send that message that you see on the left, sun sets at 7.33. It says, please uh, finish the hole that you're on and then uh, bring your golf cart in. And that's, that's helped tremendously because staff usually would have to, before tag marshal would have to go in there and, and, and police them and get them in. But now we just send a message, and the, and the one the the, the 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 shot on the right, uh, you know, you can just send a message. Hey, you're behind. Pick up your pace of play, and and that works tremendously too. So between the two golf courses, you know, you mentioned earlier that that on course person is still important. So occasionally we will send someone out there, and more so at Foothills because they have 36 holes, but. You know, we're talking about return on investment. That's helped us tremendously to be able to tremendously cut back on our course assistant staff and to use it as a management tool uh, in, in the golf shop that to have that staff have access to this kind of information is priceless, really. Um, um, uh, that's, that's fantastic to hear. So what we often hear from the operators we work with, uh, Tom, is that when they have good staff, obviously they don't want to get rid of that staff, but they want higher value tasks from them you know where can you add more value to our guests and, and members rather than driving around the course backwards and looking for problems um, and i'm delighted to hear that you have moved away from calling uh your the course assistants marshals and rangers because that is really quite a it's a policing term right and it's something that players don't actually like they don't like the marshal they don't like a ranger because they think okay if this guy approaches he's going to tell me i'm slow and i'm not going to like that so you're moving away from that. You're calling them assistants, which is really what they're there for. They're there to assist so that your guests have a great time. And now they've got information um, that helps them manage things better. Um, how have, has your team uh, responded to having this line of sight? And let me also just skip back again. So they can literally look at the screen where in the past they would be flying blind, if you will. Just six months ago, <laughs> they'd be flying blind. And, and now they... Um, and, and now they've got full line of sight. So, so how is how is that uh, impacting um, just their, their confidence in terms of managing uh, such a busy such a busy facility? Well, the staff absolutely loves the technology. Uh, to your point, uh, and I'll call it in the old days. You know, it was very important that you started with the first groups that teed off, and, and to make sure that their pace of play was not getting behind because once you get behind, it's like a traffic jam on an interstate. It, it's just, there's no way to fix it unless you ask someone to leave the golf course. With this technology, again, we can have our professional staff that's working behind the counter uh, in between checking in golfers, they simply just trying to check the course map. And if they notice a, a group is behind, they can send them a message. And if they don't pick up the pace of play, we can actually send someone out there. So staff absolutely uh, loves it. I mean, if I took it away from them at this point, I, my life would be in danger. But <laughs> that uh, we haven't talked about is uh, the golfer experience. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact that whenever I go play a golf course and, and I discover that they have a, a, a GPS on their golf carts, I know right away that I'm gonna have a, a, a really a enjoyable round of golf because it's gonna be much easier to get my yardage. And, and so we've received a lot of comments from 
at a public golf course, you, you do have a number of golfers that play your courses on a regular basis, and most of them are the club members, and they ask, absolutely love the technology. And, and I have to tell them, I said, hey, you love it, but my staff, I think, loves it more than you do. Um, that is... Uh... That is nicely put, but uh, uh, so so the the yardage obviously is a sort of bread and butter GPS um, uh, value, and and it's great that this is helping you. Um, I believe you also do uh, quite a lot of league play at um, at at the courses. It is and and obviously those are regular. So have you found that uh, they're now enjoying the course more than they used to? Absolutely. I mean, as I said earlier, we have been, uh, and some of the clubs are some of the slowest golfers. Uh, they think that they're playing, actually playing in the U.S. Open, but uh, uh, the comments from them, they love it. Uh, and as you can see by this screen, uh, and, and, and these are real numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. You come out to our golf course, I mean, if you play a five, five and a half hour round, and, and there are a lot of courses that we've, we've all played those kind of rounds, it's brutal because you're waiting on every shot, every hole. And, and if you can get it down to four and a half or less, the, the play just flows. And so our golfers love it. Our staff loves it. And again, we'll talk about ROI, return on investment later, but uh, it, it's, it's exceeded my expectations. And I've always been one to kind of look at best practices and, you know, and again, don't want to change the subject for like third party vendors. If you are an uh, industry with expired inventory, like the golf industry is, that I mean, we're using third party vendors to help get rid of some of our inventory. That's been a success. So, best practices is, has helped us tremendously. So, uh, Tom, you are uh, very data driven, and, and you were also said that you're very transparent, obviously, about your performance. You mentioned, um, and that's obviously also part of being a municipal facility, that your your successes, but also your shortcomings, maybe in some years, are publicly available to anybody. Um, and I wanted to just point out what an impact you have, you and the team have been able to make this season, where at Foothills, um, the percentage of play on pace and within 10 minutes is went up from 61% to 86%. Uh, which is uh, really impactful. And at Meadows, your percentage of, of rounds that were 30 minutes or slow or over that were delayed by, you know, often it's one group that delays a tail of three or four or five groups. All of a sudden, 20, 30 players have been impacted by one group. Um, that is down from 11% to 4%. So that's uh, significant simply because um, if, if you're living in a world where you're driving 100 and 140,000 rounds, um, that 6% difference means 10,000 people that you're making happier, right? So it's, it's, um, um, it, is, it is really significant. And also um, what is important to see is that in your initial tracking, which we just started to, to use a system in May versus July when it got really busy, you are up in rounds uh, tremendously. So you've got much more traffic and you're getting better results. So normally what you'd expect is if the traffic goes up, things slow down. That's what, that's what happens on the road. But on the contrary, the flat traffic went up, but you have managed um, your courses better than you did um, previously just by using the system effectively. And I just wanted to commend you. Um, and you can see, I mean, we can see from a, from a data point of view how your team has bought into it. And there's literally also thousands of system logins into the back end. Um, and this is just season one. So what always excites us is what can we do next year? You know, once we have year and year comparison, how can we help you get even better? So um, I, do you have a bit of a competition going between uh, the Foothills and the Meadows team sometimes as to performance? Well, or are, they uh, not, are they not comparable? Earlier, Foot, Foothills is more like a parkland golf course. There's mm -hmm. not much distance between uh, green and tees, and it's an, it's an easier golf course. The Meadows, uh, there are, I, I believe, 12 forced carries. In other words, there are uh, 12 areas where you have to get your ball in the air. I mean, there's either a, a, a creek or ditch or a bunker in front of the green. Uh, and looking at this chart, I think those are 18 hole rounds because Foothills far exceeds yes. Meadows. 
uh, in, in total rounds. Uh, and one of the things that you don't see in, in that picture, you see where we increase our pace of play, but we're very customer service friendly. And something that you don't think about is that when we have pace of play problems, when we give, get above five hour rounds, we don't hesitate to give a rain check. We apologize, we give a rain check. Obviously that's not happening now, but prior to Tag Marshall, I mean, uh, since we've had tag marshals, we haven't given out a rain check. As a matter of fact, we have an agreement with our men's club that if they play, if it takes more than five hours to play a round of golf at our golf course, we will give that group a rain check for uh, four rounds of golf. So uh, we haven't given out any this year. So that's huge. That's fantastic. Um, I've got... Uh... Um, a single day's data, which is the Thursday, the 16th of July, which is another busy day um, at the Meadows course, 67 groups tracked. That's about 260 players. I mean, that's what you expect from a busy day. Yes. Um, your goal time is 420. Your actual time achieved is 417. The system says and 11 seconds. So you're bang on. But what is amazing to see is that your on pace and within 10 minutes is, is 92%. So that is that little dial down here, uh, which shows you on pace and then that little section of orange with it, which is within 10 minutes. So that all is flow of happiness. And here's what we can see um, our individual tea times and how they've performed uh, throughout the day. Um, and just to have that context, what was the weather like? Uh, so it, it, was a, it was a decent day out, um, not, not too much wind. So. It, how, how do you and the team use this data? Also down here is a whole stats, whole by whole. Is this something that you look at on a regular basis and, and how do you hold your team accountable um, when it comes to the performance that you, that you want from them? Well, uh, again, you mentioned that this is our first year. We actually didn't get the system installed and up and running until uh, March. Uh, and as far as we, we kind of look at the data, if you will, however, uh, the proof is in the pudding uh, because we, we, we look at the pace of play and, and we see that on a daily basis that we're not having any problems. And so that's something that we check constantly. And it's just, it, it's been fantastic actually. And I, as we uh, get advanced in years using this, for example, next year, I think that uh, we'll kind of dive into the data more, but uh, I think in other sports, they say scoreboard doesn't lie. So the fact that uh, uh, we're, we're not having any complaints on pace of play, and when we do check it, it, it seems to be fantastic. It's exceeded my expectations. Um, so what you will find, uh, Tom, and, uh, is that our team will reach out to you now as your season starts to wind down. I know that normally you don't close or only for a few days. Uh, because of your famous 310 days of sunshine a year. But uh, normally what our team would do is, is uh, work with you on reporting uh, for your season and also help you set goals and, and look at opportunities for further improvement. Because we know that you and your team aren't necessarily data analysts. And as much as your day-to-day -day is more informed now, there's lots to learn, right? So this is where um, I'm looking forward to our customer success guys reaching out and says, this is what you've achieved. Here's some of the things that we're seeing. Here's some of the crunch holes on the course that um, may be causing pressure areas. And, and this is opportunities that you have to consider adjusted setups or what, whatever you, uh, you may want to do. So there's a whole world uh, that you will discover. But I can also see why you, um, you guys have just been so incredibly busy. And if, if it works in your day-to-day -day in terms of the live um, data that you're getting, uh, that is obviously, um, that is obviously the, the, the first thing that, that you need and that you want from it. But uh, what we're excited about getting you into, especially over the next season and, and the, third, the third season of our partnership is to really dig into um, that data uh, a bit further and, and just get, get, get even further informed. So there's a whole world that um, we're going to uncover with you and I know that uh, you and your team are going to um, get even smarter. Um, Tom, one of the things that, uh, and you mentioned it, um, how does this impact your course revenue? Is it good for business? And obviously you're reporting to the city, you're reporting to your, your parks um, uh, setup. 
Um, and you need to justify an investment like this um, over and above having a, a, a bumper year like this one. Um, is it good for your business? And uh, would you would you have done it? Would you do it again if you if you had the choice? Well, uh, you know it's interesting, and, and again, this is our first year doing this. Uh, this year, there's so many variables that uh, we have to consider, and, and we won't we won't have a complete analysis until the end of the year. For example, you know, as it relates to you know return on investment, uh, obviously cart revenue is up five percent, and for us in Colorado, we the 10 of the first 12 months of the year, we had snow on the ground, which is highly unusual for a, a place that has sunshine 310 days a year. So the first quarter, we only played uh, uh, two weeks of golf. And then after that, uh, the pandemic, uh, we were closed for another five weeks. And then three weeks after that we were allowed to open, we were walking only. You had to pay in advance, and these were all guidelines implemented by our, our health authorities. So all of those factors, and then still 5% up in cart revenue, that's pretty impressive. And, and uh, another uh, item that's impacted us, one of the guidelines is the individual carts. So we have to send four carts out. That doesn't impact revenue because you pay per rider, per cart. So we haven't been able to come up with an exact analysis. Obviously, uh, between the two golf courses, uh, we've been able to cut back approximately $25,000 in uh, uh, course assistance salaries or hourly wages because we, we simply don't use them as much. So it'll be interesting what happens at the end of the year. Uh, we do know that uh, uh, an impact that happens is our customers, we, we're seeing some repeat business because we do have the GPS units in our golf carts and no other golf course in our market has that. And, and if you play golf around the country, generally uh, high volume public golf courses do not have GPS systems in their golf carts. So that's kind of another feather in our cap. Uh, that amenity golfers really do love. Um, that's that's brilliant. So so the repeat play um, and uh, your your guests choosing your course over another is is obviously huge. And if you think about it, that if there is a percentage of and you mentioned earlier, if you've got a five hour round, that is not a nice outing. So if uh, if that is not an issue for you at all, um, and everybody's happy, they will come back for more. Versus um, in a, in a, that, another year and another universe where um, things are a bit tardy and you have to do rain checks, they might say, yeah, the guys are giving me a rain check, but I don't really want to go back um, regardless, right? Or I'd do less of it. So that must have had um, quite a, a nice positive impact on you. And as you're saying, you, you'll only know once you know at, at, the, end of the, at the end of the season. But uh, from, what, from what you're saying, that is certainly um, a feather in your, in your cap, as you would put it. Well, you know, I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, specifically pace of play, it's something that we have uh, labeled as a priority, you know, five, six years ago when we were giving out a ton of rain checks. And so we have a lot of tools in our toolbox, education, pace of play clocks. We actually have uh, the pace of play chart on our scorecards. But I will say this, that tag, tag Marshall, adding Tag Marshall uh, just put the icing on the cake. And, and, and again, that's just the pace of play. The, the other piece that I think is more critical is the management tool uh, and, and what's, it's able, what's it's allowed us to do in managing our golf course, uh, not just pace of play. I talked earlier about uh, uh, twilight rounds where golfers take carts. We, we actually have, and this happens, believe it or not, this happens at a public golf course, high volume public golf course. Golfers come in and they pay for nine hole cart and then they take it on the backside. And so we're able to kind of catch those golfers too. So it's been tremendous. Yeah. No, the more you know, the more you know, right? You can never know enough about your business. You can never have enough data. And also the nice thing is that um, if that happens, you've got a track map. You've got evidence that, that somebody was naughty. Um, and if, uh, yeah, in the, in the past where you needed to give out rain checks just because people had a strong opinion, now you can check 
And somebody might say, it felt like I played five hours. And then you can look at the data and you say, well, guys, you played 425, you know. Um, uh, come, we'll, we'll give you a comp, a comp drink, which is obviously less, uh, less revenue loss than a, a full foursome a rain check. So that is something that we just information just changes the game. And also, I'm sure that for your team to have the confidence um, to, to have this information um, makes their lives easier. Would you, would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. A absolutely. I, uh, when we were going through the process of making a decision as to uh, if we're going to add a, a GPS or golf carts, I, I think I would be remiss if I didn't mention the, the meeting we had. I think Tom Cox is the, the local rep here. And uh, we sat down with him. And I think the thing that was most impressive were the golf courses in your inventory that are using this product. And anytime you make an investment at, at this level, I simply got on the phone and I call these golf courses. I mean, Castle Pines is right here in, in Castle Rock in Colorado. Uh, Pinehurst, Bandon Dunes. So I talked to the operators and, and you know what I did also? I didn't call and ask for the director of golf to talk to them. I would talk to someone in the golf shop, whoever answered the phone and says, are you in the golf shop? Are you using this product? How do you like it? And, and, and it was just, it was amazing the feedback that I got. And so that made it easier for me to sell. Obviously I had to show that we would uh, have a return on investment. But when I was able to sit down with our executive director and I was able to kind of share with him the golf courses that were using this particular uh, GPS system, uh, it was probably one of the easier capital sales that I've, I've had to make in my 14 years with this facility, with this park and rec district. So uh, you, you, that is experience right there. You speak to uh, the assistant, you know, um, yeah. the, the people at the call face, right? They would give you the honest answer and yeah, well, well played to you. And uh, we, I mean, we couldn't be happier with you um, as a partner. Um, and, and as much as we've got a, a broad range of clubs that we work with and some of them are really busy, you guys are just uh, shooting the lights out when it comes to traffic. So um, that's fantastic. So what I would like to do is um, just run another quick poll. Um, if I remember how to do it. I did it a few minutes ago, so I should. Um, another poll, and the question is, what experience factors are you looking to invest in at your club? Um, let's launch it. And just to get a, a sense of, again, of, of, um, of, of you guys listening in, and, and while you're doing this, also feel free to think of some questions that you may want to ask Tom um, in, in a, a Q and A that we've got five minutes for just now. Um, so there's uh, the question spread is you can train your staff more, maybe improve your course design, renovate, uh, revamp your clubhouse, food and beverage facilities, which is always high on the committee's agenda. Normally, uh, technology to optimize pace of play. That's, that's what we're talking about here. Reduce green fees. Sometimes uh, that might attract uh, um, attract more play. It's not something that you want to do necessarily and especially now with high demand you hopefully don't have to a uh, better course conditioning is never out of fashion um so thanks uh, for giving your uh, your input and uh, natalie um is our marketing manager are there any questions that you can shoot over to me that have maybe been asked um okay chat we don't want chat okay some questions okay um would you say the golf benefit in this tom uh, would you say the golf industry has benefited from COVID overall? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, absolutely. I, and I've shared this at board meetings is that it turns out that the golf industry is the perfect sport for a pandemic. Uh, natural uh, social distancing and it's outdoors. I'll never forget there was a golf course before we opened uh, uh, advertise the fact that Come play our golf course. It's from the parking lot to the first tee to the parking lot. And I, I said, let me go see what this looks like. Sure enough, we parked, we paid in advance, we walked to the first tee, 
we played 18 holes and got in our car and left. And uh, I'm very thankful that the health uh, uh, authority in our district uh, makes uh, face masks mandatory, certainly makes our job easier. If you're indoors in the state of Colorado, you have to wear a face mask. So we have no problems with that. And we, we do all of the other things that you have to do. We sanitize our golf carts in between use. We sanitize them before we put them up at night. Uh, we have single rider carts. Uh, so it's been the, the golf industry is just, except I understand that some resort golf courses where you have to travel to play those golf courses are not doing as well, but uh, for, for the most part, golf courses have benefited greatly from uh, doing a pandemic. Yeah, um, I would I would echo that, Tom. It, it seems like the the local access golf has boost, been boosted, um, but uh, the, the the longer distance travel and um, and I was I spoke to um, Matt Boxer at Pinos yesterday. They have had mostly. Uh, drive-in traffic and uh, he's saying that uh, most of their uh, corporate traffic has really been postponed but they're still i mean they're, they're keeping they're keeping busy um aaron hill is also uh, um, i was chatting to jim lombardo last week he's saying you can't get around at aaron hills and he's got friends asking him jim can't i come and play no <laughs> you must book for next season they close they've got a hard date they close on the 18th of october you can't get around at aaron hills um, which is uh, up in, in Wisconsin, as you know. Um, and so, so they have been able to adjust and adapt and, and made it work. Um, and also what we're hearing a lot from many private clubs is a lot of younger members are joining because they now feel like they can get more value because they've got more time available, like we spoke, to, spoke about earlier. I've got one more question. Um, um, how has the team adjusted to using tag marshal has it had a positive impact on your morale as a staff and as a team absolutely uh and it's i don't want to say the training is idiot proof but uh we we assign one assistant pro to train staff and they just absolutely love it because like i said earlier in between uh checking in golfers They'll simply pull up the tag marshal screen and check on the pace of play. And uh, they have fun sending notes to the golfers, you know, like, don't make me have to come out there. To get you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a fun process. It, it really has uh, helped us tremendously. And staff, they absolutely love it. They, I mean, it makes their job easier. Who wouldn't like that, right? No, for sure. Um, Great. I think, uh, yeah, so the, the last question, I think you've answered. How easy was it to set up Tag Marshall at your course? Uh, you mentioned you got uh, installed in, in March, uh, that probably before COVID hit, so when the world was still uh, as we knew it. Uh, was it was it a seamless process um, in terms of training and getting your team onboarded and excited for it? Yeah, it, it was. Uh, uh, like you said, we started in March. Uh, a lot of golf carts, though. I mean, 109 golf carts at one facility and 77 golf carts at another facility. Uh, after we got installed, I mean, it takes, and, they, and, and, and you guys do a great job letting us know this, it takes, uh, you know, a couple of weeks for everything to be in sync, the GPS to be in sync. Uh, we had an issue with uh, the brackets. You know, they were kind of a little loose. And actually, the thing that impressed me more than anything is that Tag Marshall flew someone out there and to correct the problem. So the staff didn't have to do it. Tag Marshall did it. And at this point, we're kind of excited. Now, we are in Colorado. And, and, and one of the things I did mention was we did not increase our, our part fees just because mm -hmm. we added GPS. We wanted to kind of show the golfers that uh, uh, it was something that we were doing to kind of enhance their experience. It's going to be interesting during the winter because we're going to have to take the units off of some of the carts uh, because we're kind of unique in that we store some of our carts outdoors. However, the fact that we did not charge extra for a GPS and 
golfers know that they're getting a regular rate. We don't have to change anything during this off season. No, that helps. Um, yes. Uh, so I, I know that our team will help you winterize um, because as much as you've got 310 days of sunshine, there are going to be some weather challenges. Tom, uh, this has been tremendous. Thank you so much. Um, and also thanks for the good questions. Uh, really, really appreciate you sharing so freely and giving off your time. Uh, one thing I would like to just, uh, because I'm personally so extremely excited about it, it's just to give a 10 second preview of our um, Tag Marshall Analytics Hub, which is that next generation um, goal setting and analytics that we are busy testing at the moment with, with a couple of courses and that's going to get launched in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, to me personally, this is really the, uh, the, the answer to six years of working um, on this um, and being part of this journey and, 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 and literally the, the tangible results of learning from 12 million golf rounds. So this is everything that we've ever learned from the likes of uh, Pebble Beach and, and Pinehurst and Eastlake and, and all those tremendous operators. Um, and also uh, you know, guys going five or six years back with us uh, is, is now coming through in this. And, and, and I'm super excited to be sharing that um, and I hope that we can we can launch it soon. So that is something that we'll introduce to you and the team as well, uh, Tom. And, and uh, for the, the data nerds on the team, they can then put goals in that you're setting for certain days of the week um, and it'll help you manage uh, things even more tightly. So I hope that, uh, that you'll get lots of use out of it. Tom, but thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy the, the next uh, few months. And, uh, Things are not going to wind down anytime soon, but eventually they will. And then hopefully you get a, a rest after this crazy, busy, hectic uh, 2020. I'm looking forward to a break. I'm sure you do. Okay. Thank you, Tom. All the best to you. <laughs>